When designing a jump in a platformer, it's important to understand that there are many things that we can do to make a jump look and feel better, like we have in the previous two videos with Cody time and jump buffering. These help ensure the player's intention is always interpreted correctly. But what about if you, the designer, want to make a gap or a ledge exactly the right distance? How would we know if the gap was large enough or tall enough? The current variables that we have are arbitrary and hard to work with. By setting them, we don't know exactly how, how tall we're going to jump, how long we're going to be in the air. What if, instead of defining the jump velocity and jump gravity, we defined jump height and time to peak? Then we would be able to exactly define the height and the time we spent in the jump state, and consequently, the distance that we could jump. And we can do that with physics. Now these physics equations might look intimidating, and even to me they're a bit daunting, but we don't have to fully understand, we just need to know that we can use them to define our jump velocity and our player's gravity. Take this kinematic equation for displacement and acceleration, and we can use it to determine our player's gravity. Displacement equals initial velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared divided by 2. We can substitute our variables to make jump height equals 0 times time plus gravity times time to jump peak squared divided by 2. And since our initial velocity is 0, we can simplify to jump height equals gravity times time to jump peak squared divided by 2. Now that we have that, we can times by 2 by both sides to get 2 jump height equals gravity times time to jump peak squared. We can then divide time to jump peak squared to isolate gravity. There you have it. The next equation that we can look at to work out our jump velocity is the velocity and acceleration equation. The above equation solves for final velocity of an object when it is undergoing a constant acceleration. This one is a little simpler to apply since we've worked out our gravity, we just need to substitute in the rest of our variables. Jump velocity equals gravity times time to jump peak. Okay, let's jump into Godot and apply these formulas. Here we are in the Godot game engine and we've got our scene from the last couple lessons. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run it so that we can just look at what we're working with. So we've got our coyote time and we've got our jump buffering. So things feel pretty good on the input side of things, but the jump is still a bit slow and we can jump very far and the, the jump height is pretty much probably where you'd want it, maybe two tiles tall, but that's just a fluke. I just picked these numbers randomly, um, being gravity 1500 and jump speed 600. Let's take those kinematic equations from before and apply them in the Godot game engine. So we're going to need two new variables. Uh, they're going to be export variables. So we've got export float time to jump peak. And we're going to define that. Um, I'm just pick something random like 0.5, half a second to the peak, and the next one is what? This one will be an int integer, jump height, and we'll just go with uh, we're the 64 tile map, and we want it to jump too, so we'll go 128 no units. Uh, in Godot, it's worth noting that everything is in pixels in 2D. So when you're defining a jump height, it needs to be in pixels, not in meters or any other unit. And the time to jump will need to be in seconds. So the next thing we need to do is remove the definition of gravity and jump speed. These two things, uh, maybe you can type them if you want. You don't have to in the game engine. Back to. So let's look at our first kinematic equation that we've got here. Um, we've written down gravity equals two times jump height divided by time to jump peak squared. So in the ready, we're going to do exactly that. Or I forget, it looks like in my testing, I've changed gravity and jump speed to a variable. If you're working along with this, you need to do that too. 
because you can't change the properties of constant. Uh, when we make those changes here, change this to variable. Okay, gravity equals, we're gonna do this in brackets, two times jump height. divided by, and we need to use the formula pow, power, time to jump, peak, comma two for squared. And our next equation is the velocity and acceleration equation, and we've defined it as jump velocity equals gravity times time to jump peak. So that's reasonably simple to put in. Jump speed is the name of the variable that we're using here. So we can just recycle that or you can rename it. It's up to you. Gravity times time to jump peak. There is actually one thing we do need to change. That is in the jump. We do need to change this to a negative because all the variables that we just put in are all positive and in Gitto negative is up. So now that we've done that, give the game a run and look at that we can jump exactly two tiles we're in the air for a second okay that's great okay now that we have these two new variables we can play around with them in the engine to work out a good height for our game there's a couple of other things we can do we uh, do we want our jump to be fast and snappy or do we want it to be slow and floaty if we make the time to jump peak something like 0.5 it will take one second for the jump to take place which is a pretty long time we can also take into account our lateral speed as well if we want our player to be only able to clear two blocks in width during a jump we can take the distance that we want to limit the player by Divide it by the speed at which the player moves and then divide it by two. So our time to jump peak represents half the time that we're in the air. Conveniently for us, it becomes one tenth of the distance we want. So we can just put 0.128. Then for our height, we can make it something like uh, 128 as well. Nope. Okay. You'll notice now that the jump is very quick but we can only jump two tiles to compensate for something like this uh, perhaps you want to make the player only be able to jump 64 so the way to think about it is if you have quite a short time to jump peak you're going to be going up and down really quickly um, the higher that you can jump so the relationship is the lower the jump height the slower the jump will be uh, the higher the jump height, uh, the faster the jump will be, depending on the time to jump peak. So now that we've got it to 64, things feel a lot more normal, but we can't jump as high. So, you know, maybe there's some fine tuning that maybe you want it to do three, uh, which would be 192. Two. And we want to make that somewhere in between. So we're just going to that 80. Now you can jump a little bit higher than one block. And clearing this is nice and easy. Mm -hmm. It feels pretty good. And now when you're designing a level, you can take into account that uh, you need to make sure that no gap is larger than three tiles and and uh, no block is taller than one otherwise your player is not going to be able to jump on it um, these kind of things make it a lot easier to define uh, the parameters in which your player exists and design levels around that um, so that's really good okay guys that concludes this lesson I hope you've learned something valuable all right thank you for watching